Yeah, we are, we're very proud to have Tudor. Um, who's going to tell us something about something. Yeah, um, yeah there, there, are, there are two potential titles for this. I don't remember which one I gave. Um, I, I will tell you about, um, in, in part, about a paper from December um, with Thomas Kreutzig, uh, Nicholas Garner, and Nathan Gear, um, called a TQFT for, for non-semi-simple, or a QFT for non-semi-simple TQFT. Um, it is related um, to work a few years ago um, by uh, Gukakusen, Nakajima, Park Pei, and Sopenko. Um, there's a, a paper called Rosansky Witten Theory of Coulomb Branches. There have been a few follow ups to that. Um, also, there's work by uh, Chengchen, Ferrari, Gukak, and Harrison involving 3D modularity that is also sort of related to this. Um, and I should mention ongoing work in progress of uh, Boris Fagan, um, Gukak, and Rishi Tikin. Um, so, right, um, let me um, just, just to introduce this. So there's a story from 30-ish years ago um, involving transcendence theory labeled by a compact uh, a compact group G and some level. Um, and so, so Witten argued that this should lead to the structure of what we now call the TQFT. And Trinsimons admits Holomorphic boundary conditions that support the WZW VOA um, just call that GK as well. And so, uh, in fact, all of the TQST structures in Transimons could also be analyzed dually. Um, in terms of VOAs, um, and that's how explicit computations were actually done, things like braiding. Um, no, it might be cutting in and out. It didn't seem super well charged. Oh, no, it's fine. That's okay. Do you want me to tap on it or something? No, okay, so. It's good? So, sorry. Uh, what? Ah, it is here? Is that okay? Right. Uh, I'll do I, I mean. Sorry. So sorry. It, it, it exists. It's recording. Um, it's fine. <laughs> okay. It is because it was muted. It was muted. It was muted on Zoom, but it's recording in Panapto. So. It was recording. Okay, cool. Um, and then there's Drinfeld Kono and the Kashtan Lustig correspondence um, that relates WZW to, to quantum groups. Um, and yeah, so just write quantum group here. Um, at an uh, even root of unity is the thing that's, that's relevant. Um, so with appropriate shifts on the left, the thing that's relevant here is the, the 2 k root of unity. There's some dual Coxeter number shifts involved. Um, a key object in all these perspectives um, is a certain braided tensor category. sort of a, a key algebraic object from which the rest of the TQFT that exists is constructed. Um, and in 
functorial TQFT terms, that's Z of S1. This is a braided, a braided tensor category whose objects physically are line operators. Um, so, because I just said a second ago, um, all sort of higher objects, higher lower categorically and higher in dimension objects in the TQFT are constructed from this. So the value on surfaces, the value on three manifolds, constructed from Z of S1 as a braided tensor category with some extra modularity properties. Um, for example, simple example, um, the space associated to S2, which physically by state operator correspondence we would call local operators, so bulk Unit has nothing to do with it, but it's it's topologically a circle. Yep. Um, yep. Um, so, coming from the fact that we can cut S two into two disks along S one, Z of S one is HOM um, in. Sorry, Z of S two is HOM in the category Z of S one of Z of a disk, but Z of a disk is called the tensor identity in this category. Um, and so one, one gets the space of states associated to S2. Um, and uh, Z, of, uh, Z of T2, the space of states on the torus, is the growth in D group of Z of S1. Um, in terms of VOAs, um, Z of S1 um, is, uh, is modules for the WZW VOA. Um, there's, and there's a picture to go with that as well. Um, so if we, um, if we slice three-dimensional space off with a holomorphic boundary condition, uh, then for every bulk line operator, which is an object of this category, Z of S1, uh, we get a space of local operators at the point where the line intersects the holomorphic boundary. Um, that gives us, and, and the space of local operators at this intersection point is a module for the VOA. And the elements of the VOA are local operators on this holomorphic boundary. They act on stuff at this intersection point by collision. Um, this, the picture, gives us a functor from the categories out of S1 to modules for whatever sits on the boundary. Um, and, and that functor ends up being an equivalence, um, hence, hence that. Um, and in quantum group land, the same Z of S1 um, is a big semi-simplification of modules for UQ of G. Um, so, semi-simplification of that category. Um, so, I, I said semi-simplification. So, um, for, in, in this entire 
old, old but still interesting Trin Simon story. Um, the category Z of S1 is finite semi simple. That's, in fact, necessary for some of these statements, um, particularly about K theory, to make sense. Um, and so a key property, just to say that again, um, in, in the setup, Z of S1 is finite semi simple. Um, meaning that every um, every object L um, can be expressed as a direct sum of a finite set of Um, a finite set of generating objects with some multiplicities um, with the property that hums among these generating objects um, are, are nearly trivial. Um, hum from one of these objects to itself is C, and otherwise it's zero. Um, so, right, so these would be called simples or irreducibles in, in an abelian category. This, this is an abelian category, so these are just the simple objects. Um, and everything is a direct sum of simples. That's what, what one would say mathematically. Um, physically, the thing one says um, is that all line operators in Trin Simons theory can be broken down as direct sums of irreducible Wilson lines, um, and there are only finitely many in equivalent irreducible Wilson lines. That's, and that's, that's what appears here. Um, and Do you know what the WIR? Yeah, I mean, so. so rank one, no, 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 they're not rank one. Um, they're, they're, they're just the, they're, I mean, they're uh, certain irreducible modules for, for the quantum group at a root of unity. Um, they're, they're labeled by, Dominant, weight, dominant weights in a vial alcove. Um, and this, the size of the alcove depends on the level K. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, there's one more thing I want to say on this board. Um, so a, just a, a, a trivial consequence of mathematical semi-simplicity, um, I guess together with knowing that the tensor identity is one of these simple objects, it's the trivial Wilson line, the trivial representation. Um, a, a consequence um, is that Z of S2 uh, which is hum from the tensor identity to itself, but the tensor identity is simple. Um, this is just C. Uh, which is the statement that the only gauge invariant local operators in Trin Simons theory are multiples of the identity. That's, that's the C. Um, so that, that's a reflection of, of the semi simplicity. Um, okay, so this, this story um, has been generalized in many ways um, over the past 30 years, beginning in the early 90s. Um, Mathematically, the things that have been generalized are the, like the VOA perspective and the quantum group perspective. Um, so, generalizations. Um, on, on the quantum group side, and it's not necessarily quantum groups, it's just that, that that's where all the examples come from. Um, so th there have been TQFTs constructed now from non-semi-simple and potentially non-finite 
non-finite, non but in a well-regulated way, um, braided tensor categories with an appropriate notion of modularity. Um, um, and so this was initially uh, Libyshenko. Um, in the early 90s um, that almost did it, but was still getting some zeros around that didn't, like a certain three manifold, um, and the values on certain three manifolds would be zero, which did not make for a nice TQFT, and those issues have largely now been dealt with. Uh, and so the modern perspective, the modern technology for dealing with zeros and infinities that come from non-semi-simplicity and non-finiteness in the right way, um, uh, come from work of Costantino, uh, Gear, and Patira Mirand. It's one person, um, and uh, and then many many follow-ups. This was a, almost ten years ago, and th there have been many developments since. But this, this sort of started a whole series of developments. Um, so th this is this is now a well-developed subject. Uh, the, the prominent examples of such categories uh, come from quantum groups at root of unity without doing this thing that Reshitikin and Turayev did when formulating three manifold invariants with quantum groups, namely without semi simplifying. Um, so, without taking what I call the semi simplification, which throws out almost everything. Um, so if one takes the full category of quantum group modules at a root of unity, or even sitting inside there, there's a smaller thing that's still not semi-simple and interesting, uh, which is known as modules for the small quantum group, which I will define hopefully in half an hour. Uh, anyway, then one can apply this machinery to say the small quantum group and get, um, get some invariance. OK. Um, on the VLA side, um, there is a logarithmic, well, sorry, the, the things that are relevant on the VLA side are not non-rational and in particular logarithmic VLAs, and there's a logarithmic version of the kashtan lustig correspondence um, that, that was proposed by Fagan and Tipunin, uh, which involves these, these small quantum groups. Uh, no. Um, I mean, they're called logarithmic because certain correlators are, 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 are logarithmic. But the, um, I, I think, so, so rational VOAs have semi-simple module categories. I think that, that's really the, the main relevant thing to, to say about them. Um, and, and, and otherwise, they don't. And, and logarithmic is like a slightly nicer version than is, is a nicer category than all non-rational VOAs. Um, um, right. Um, so, um, so there's a conjecture here um, that uh, the module category for the small quantum group at an even root of unity um, is, is equivalent to modules for what are known as fake and Tipunin algebras. Which I'll say a tiny bit more about. Um, and fake and Tipunin. Um, the, the, right, so, so the conjecture was made for braided tensor categories, so the, there, but can be read at several levels. So it's, it's an equivalence of abelian categories, then, then you want fusion to work out, and then you want braiding to work out, and then you want to define modular S and T matrices, um, and, and all of that should, should be the same on the two sides. Um, it took many, many years to, to actually understand how to do that properly. Um, and the naive R matrix 
on, on the left doesn't actually correspond to, um, to the braiding in the VOA side, and that needed to be sorted out. Um, um, so um, just uh, some, some things to say about this. Uh, in the SL2 case, um, the fagin tipunin algebra is better known as the triplet. Um, it is the first and most famous example of a non-rational VOA. Um, so FT of SL2 is the triplet algebra um, that Gabriel Deal and Kausch introduced. Um, and the conjecture um, is now proven um, and has, well, so, so the conjecture for SLT was initially made by um, uh, Fagin, Gagnutinov, Semikatov, and Tipunin um, in, in the mid-90s. Um, and it's, it's now it's proven in a bunch of works. I'm just going to say some of the authors involved because it again, it took a lot of work in many steps. Um, so, so Nagatomo and Tsuchiya worked on this, uh, Kreutzig, Yang and McRae, um, Kreutzig, Milos Rupert, Kreutzig, Gagnutinov, and Runkel, um, Sugimoto, um, recently, and very recently, Gannon and Negron. Um, so, um, so this is well understood, but hard. Um, uh, as far as I know, the more general case, um, um, it is still open. Um, and I said I would say something about what this mysterious FT object is. I'm not sure this will help, but I'll say it. Um, so a useful decomposition that is proven for SL2 um, by Sugimoto and conjectured in general uh, is that this VOA, which is defined in some other way, um, is a big extension of a W algebra at fractional level. Um, so one sums over modules of a W algebra labeled by dominant roots. Um, and multiplies by the finite dimensional representations of G labeled by the same dominant roots as coefficients. Um, so and it's a W algebra at level 1 over K associated to G. Um, and it has, again, modules labeled by the same dominant roots. And, uh, and I th think this is supposed to hold when G is ADE. Um, this was useful for what I may, might get to in the last two minutes of the talk. Um, but the, the thing I just sort of want to say is that fake independent algebras are related to W algebras. Okay. Um, so given the right two boards, um, a natural question to ask is, is what's, what's the generalization of Trent Simon's theory that, that matches the right board? Um, that is what we set out to answer. Um, before giving the answer, um, I sort of want to say what a generalization of Trent Simon's TQFT is, what, what a generalization what generalization of 3D TQFTs have actually been considered in physics independently of this in the last three decades, and those are twisted supersymmetric theories. Um, a twists of supersymmetric theories are a natural place to look for something that's not semi-simple, um, because there's, there's no reason. So, so twists involve taking cohomology. Um, they, they don't preserve unitarity, uh, everything be sort of valued in DG objects, DG complexes, DG categories, um, and there's, there's no reason that those would come from something semi-simple. Um, 
sort of a natural place to look. Um, and maybe the other thing I should say um, before going into more detail is that twists of the appropriate supersymmetric theories in 3D um, are still only partially understood as, as TQFTs. Um, like one understands physically like how to classify what the twists are, and I'll say that, but, um, but the, like, the mathematical TQFT structure of these things, or, or the, same, the same thing, not just mathematical, you want to define certain objects physically and then they just haven't quite been defined yet in many cases. Um, so, right, so I, I would like in the next part of the talk to give a little overview of, of twists of 3D n equals 4 theories, uh, which are going to help us answer the question of how to generalize transignments appropriately. So 3D n equals 4, QFTs. Um, so, I'm going to list um, a slightly random assortment of facts and features. A, a, a curated assortment of, of facts and features. Um, so first, um, 3D and equals 4 quantum field theories um, can be labeled by Various sets of data. Um, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, they can be labeled by a hyperkähler manifold. Um, then we have sigma models. Um, we also have gauge theories that, for for the examples I'll discuss, um, are labeled by a compact group and a complex representation. Um, more, more generally, the, the thing one wants is a quaternionic representation, which for me is going to be the cotangent bundle of V. Um, but one can also have quaternionic representations that are not of the cotangent type, which I will not be discussing. Um, and there are some more exotic theories that I'll get to, hopefully, at the end, um, that also have transignments levels around. Um, that, that's a, that can happen given some very special conditions that were described by Goyoto and Witten um, some 10 years ago. Um, so there's, there's some data you, you, you choose. There's, they're non-Lagrangian theories as well, uh, but you, you choose some data on this list, get yourself a physical 3D n equals 4 theory, um, and then for each of these theories, um, there are two topological twists available, two ways to potentially extract um, a putative TQFT functor. Um, and in parallel with what happens in two dimensions, I'll call the twists A and B. Um, they're, they're closely related to two-dimensional A and B twists. Um, the, the A twist in 3D is a reduction of Witten's Donaldson twist for 4DN equals 2. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, so, so the class S is the the basic source of, of of such examples, and those do have Lagrangian mirrors. Um, I maybe not all. 
I, I will defer to Cyril. I mean, I, I almost want to say that like, this is like, like asking for examples of, of transcendental numbers. Like, are there any? Um, <laughs> um, I, I, would, I would expect that most things on this list are not Lagrangian. Um, but, but, but you, well, the, the reason that, that we know about the Lagrangian ones is that, that that's, that's what's easy to actually define so far and compute anything about. Yeah. You, you are, I, I, I agree. Um, um, okay. Um, so, right, B twist um, is B twist of sigma models is known as the Rosansky Witten twist and is Rosansky Witten theory that many things have been developed about. Um, B twist is first written down in gauge theories by Blau and Thompson, um, though they didn't do anything TQFT at E with that at the time. Um, one expects, um, under some good assumptions, um, that um, so this is expect with assumptions that I don't want to discuss. Um, that these will be um, extended Z-graded cohomological um, sort of 0, 1, 2, maybe 3 uh, TQFTs. Um, and by cohomological, I don't mean the same thing that mirror symmetry people mean. Um, I, I just mean that everything is in the DG world. Um, um, and by saying maybe three, uh, I mean that there's, um, there's no guarantee that three manifold invariants will be finite. Um, generally, these, these won't be dualizable, I, I think. Yeah. Um, there, there are some strong theorems about TQFTs that are fully dualizable, needing to be semi-simple, and these, these are certainly not. Um, and, and so there, there will be trouble at the top level. Um, um, on the other hand, the thing that these have that Trent-Simons generally doesn't is an extension down to, to points. And, and yet there, there are things like mathematically, Trent-Simons has been extended to points. Physically, one does not have topological boundary conditions for most transcendence theories, uh, one does very generally have topological boundary conditions for, th for 3D n equals 4 theories. Um, there, there should be no, no problem in principle extending these down to points. Um, also, um, I'll mention, since given the title of the conference, that there's 3D mirror symmetry. Um, so 3D mirror symmetry relates certain pairs of theories labeled by this sort of data um, and swaps the A and B twists. And so just as in two dimensions, there should be equivalences of these extended TQFT functors coming from 3D mirror symmetry. And that's only partially understood. Um, okay. It was... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I mean it's sorry, it's the same here. And so so if you start considering theories in Trent Simons levels, there will be an obstruction. Um, for, for gauge theories and sigma models, there's, there's no issue. For ordinary, non, non trans simons gauge theories and sigma models. Um, yeah. 
it's and it, yeah, it's, it's what, what you think. Um, right. So um, as I tried to say before, um, there's there's no reason for Z of S one for for the category of line operators in these twisted theories to be semi simple. Um, and in general, um, this will be a DG category. Um, that's that's not uh, a trivially DG category. That's that's not the derived category of something semi-simple and abelian. In other words, the category itself is generally not abelian. Um, um, however, um, in all cases that I know, in particular in gauge theories, um, this can be expressed as the derived category of something either non-semi-simple or non-finite, finite, or both. Um, so, example, your four examples. Um, what, when did I start and how much time do I have? So, I think you started the fall of the two, so I Okay, thanks. Um, so, quick example um, in B twists of sigma models, uh, Kapustin, Rosansky, and Salina. Um, um, said that. Z of S1 uh, should be the derived category of X um, at, when, when you can make X algebraic. Um, that is just not a semi-simple thing. Um, when, uh, when we're dealing with gauge theories, go on to the next board, actually. Um, yes. Um, so, um, there's some reduction on a circle to a B model that, that they use to, to justify this, but let me maybe say a better thing. So, um, in general, you expect line operators in a QFT to look like sheaves on the moduli space. Um, so given a bundle with connection on, on the target of, of a theory, one can define a line, op line operator by pulling back the connection and, and integrating and, and taking its holonomy. Um, and, and so that that's that's why something like sheaves on the on the target are showing up. Um, the the way you would actually derive this is by compactifying on a circle. This S one that that S one is the link of a line, um, and so you do circle compactification around the line to get a two dimensional theory on a half space and ask what's the category of boundary conditions for that effective two D theory. Um, and in the B twist for a smooth target, everything localizes. To constant loops, and one gets a B model, a two-dimensional B model with the same target, um, and its boundary conditions are coherent sheets. Um, great. Um, so, um, in the case of gauge theories, where we have a group and a representation, um, Z of S2 is easy-ish to describe. Um, ZB of S2 is what physicists would call the Higgs branch chiral ring. It functions on the Higgs branch. Um, and the Higgs branch is um, the 
hyperkähler quotient or algebraically the complex symplectic quotient of, of T star V by G. Um, the value of ZA on S2 is functions on what's called the Coulomb branch, um, which is um, some generically a vibration over over T mod W with fibers dual tori. Um, and this algebra of functions on the Coulomb branch is the thing that BFN gave a representation theoretic definition of involving affine Grassmannians. Um, point I'm trying to make uh, by telling you what Z of S2 is, is that in general, in gauge theory, these are infinite. Um, these are functions on non-compact varieties. Um, um, highly infinite. Um, and that immediately tells you that uh, your, your category of lines cannot be something semi-simple. Um, because Z of S2 is, should be hung in the category Z of S1 between the tensor unit, with the tensor identity, and, and itself. Um, and so that is true in gauge theories. Um, this does come about as hum, but it's, it's hum in a derived category. Um, in other words, it's, it's, if you want to think about this in an abelian way, it's the entire X algebra of the identity object in itself, which can, in fact, be very large. Um, under good assumptions, however, um, and good assumptions means physically that we have a three-dimensional CFT. Um, so with, with some assumptions, there's, um, this isn't, these aren't just some abstract infinite dimensional spaces. Um, they are graded. The entire TQFT is Z-graded. Um, and these are non-negatively graded um, with um, one-dimensional space in degree zero, um, and then finite graded components in, in higher dimensions. And I'll explain in a second. Um, where that comes from. So, so the, the good CFT assumptions make sure that there's a conical action um, on, on these, these spaces, and we're taking functions on spaces with a conical action, which look like that. Um, and the conical action is related to the cohomological grading. Um, so in cohomological degree zero, there's the standard happy CFTC, and then there's an infinite amount of other stuff. Um, OK. Um, so this sort of structure persists for, um, for uh, state spaces on higher genus surfaces. Uh, one gets infinite dimensional spaces with non-negative uh, de sorry, non-negatively graded spaces with finite graded dimensions. Um, um, a final feature of things being derived that I'll mention um, is that um, if one wants to compute the state space associated to the torus from the category of line operators, this is no longer K theory. Uh, or the growth and deke group of the category, um, the only sensible way to compute this in the DG world is as Hochschild homology of Z of S1, and that also has a beautiful physical description. Um, in in transcendence theory, one of the one of the first things I learned was that to generate states in the Hilbert space of the torus. We are supposed to consider a solid torus and put all possible Wilson lines in, in the core of that solid torus. And that, that's K-theory. Um, you get, a, you get a, a space whose dimension is the number of 
simple objects in the category. Um, so what happens now Um, so, so what happens now is that um, in addition to like, throwing line operators around the core of a solid torus, we also have to sprinkle local operators in everywhere, infinitely many of those. Um, that's, that's this thing. Um, and then we can take one form descendants in the sense of Donaldson theory. Um, of local operators and integrate them along paths on, on this core. Um, and this entire thing that involves integrated one-form descendants and local operators and line operators um, ends up producing the Hochschild complex of, um, of, of the category and is, is, just, is a, just physically just re-derives Hochschild homology. Um, okay. That is all to say uh, the, the, the story is somehow much more fun and interesting, and, but also sensible um, in, in the derived world. Um, there are generalizations, there are interesting generalizations of all the things one would do in true assignments. Um, there is a generalization of WZW, um, at least for a certain 3DN equals 4 theories. Um, so for, for gauge theories, um, there are boundary VOAs. So there, physically, there are holomorphic boundary conditions. That support boundary VOAs. Um, this was, they were constructed in work of Costello and Gaiotto. Um, and if we look at slightly more exotic theories with Trent-Simons levels, then um, there's a generalization of this, including me, um, that, that can deal with that. Uh, so there, there are boundary vertex algebras, just like there are in Trent-Simons, but in general, they're logarithmic. Um, and maybe the better thing to say is that, in general, they're not rational. Um, and, and they can't possibly be if we want the same sort of thing that happened in Trent-Simons um, for VOA modules to be the same as Z of S1. Um, and so the thing one expects here is that Z of S1 uh, will be the derived category of boundary VOA modules. Yeah. Sorry, I know I missed the first part of that. So, so in the, in the G, the case, the also yes, 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 absolutely. Yes. Um, they, so, so for, for free theories that just have matter, um, one either ends up with symplectic fermions or beta gamma systems. Um, and those are the building blocks that everything else is built from, and that those are already in, in the logarithmic world. Um, n no, except that the, the, the thing that's obvious here um, is that th this is not um, th this, this is not an abelian category, and it's, it's not the derived category of anything semi-simple. Um, and so if there were a VOA, and likely, I, I, I don't know a great construction, but there there should be some, some geometric construction of boundary VOAs in these theories as well. Um, they're like curved half beta gamma systems or something. Uh, or, anyway, sorry. Um, what, whatever it is, like, can't be rational. Is, but no, sorry, no, I, I don't see logarithmic in particular sh showing up there. 
um, uh, so, so one can do it locally, right? So um, when, when, when x is flat, um, um, then there's a holomorphic boundary conditions that support symplectic fermions valued in x. Um, and in general, I would hope that there's some boundary condition that, that is some curved global version of symplectic fermions. That, that should be the, the more general thing for, for the B model. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it well. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, okay. Um, great. So final, final point for... There are often large global symmetry groups in supersymmetric 3D n equals 4 theories. Not always, um, but, but very common. Um, so there often exist. global symmetries. And this is, this is a new feature um, in, in the supersymmetric world that, that doesn't happen in Um They come into basic types. Um, it's easiest to talk about their induced action on Higgs and Coulomb branches. Um, so, so a symmetry of the theory will act in some way on the moduli space. Um, um, and by acting on Higgs and Coulomb branches in TQFT terms, what I mean is act on Z of, um, Z of S2 or, or not. Um, so there are symmetries that act on Higgs branches, uh, which I'll recall in gauge theory is a particular quotient. Um, a Higgs symmetry leads to once we topologically twist, um, in the A twist, um, the when when gets not just an ordinary um, I should have said oriented uh, oriented spin TQFT, uh, but a TQFT that that further couples to um, to gamma monopoles, where gamma is the symmetry group. Um, and in the B twist, um, one gets a function that couples to com complex flat connections. Um, and I suspect there are both Betty and Duram versions of this, and I'm not differentiating between them right now. Um, so. Um, so what do I mean by couples two? Um, I, I mean that whenever um, whenever you you take some zero, one, two, or three dimensional manifold n, um, it's not enough to to ask what z of n is. You must, or you can, well, yeah, you you must also specify a connection of the appropriate type satisfying some PDs on n. Um, and depending on what sort of twist you have, you'll, you'll get one or the other. Um, you could just set it to zero all the time, and you, you have a set of n, but also you could not set it to zero, um, and then start playing with gluing and cobordisms decorated by, by extra connections. Um, there are also symmetries that act on Coulomb branches 
rather than Higgs branches, um, and that leads to a mirror story. Um, in which the A-twist uh, couples to flat connections and the B-twist couples to monopole configurations. Um, okay. So, um, let me, right, let me try to end. Um, So one thing I do want to say. So, um, ex an example of this. Um, the main object I've been talking about is this category of line operators. Um, so in the flat connection case, um, if for algebraic sensibilities we, we take a Betty model um, and just consider the holonomy for consider lo local systems and holonomies, um, then Z of S1 now depends on a local system on S1. Um, which can be described, characterized by its holonomy, um, which is an element of the complexified group, complexified symmetry group, um, of the conjugation. Um, physically, what asking about Z of S1 with a group element means um, is that we want line operators in the background of a monodromy defect for, for this global symmetry. Uh, a monodromy defect for a flat connection for the global symmetry. Um, a defect with monodromy P. Um, and all, all together, one can package the Z of S1s for all sorts of different Gs um, as a sheaf of categories um, over over the space of potential holonomies. Uh, it ends up being a coherent sheaf. Um, that's part of this structure of the twists. Um, and it's a coherent sheaf of categories that should also be equivariant for the conjugation action of, of gamma C on itself. That, that's the sort of structure one gets for free um, when there are global symmetries around. Okay, so why did I talk about that? Um, and how much of this is familiar. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the talk that there were generalizations to non-semi-simple TQFT based on representations of quantum groups at roots of unity. Um, so now we found 3D TQFTs that are not semi-simple. Um, in fact, much more than semi-simple. They're, they're automatically derived. That's sort of okay. So there's, um, one can try to derive the TQFTs that exist in math now, and um, Schweigert and Voike recently wrote some papers about how one would derive um, these non semi simple TQFTs. Can deal with that. Um, there's a relation to logarithmic VOAs, which is awesome, um, but there's also this weird thing about global symmetries. Um, and one actually has that in the quantum group side as well. Um, I think I can mention it um, briefly. I'll summarize. Um, so uh, this is where the difference between big and small quantum groups comes up. Um, so. Um, when, when Q is an even root of unity, I pi over K, uh, and G is of ADE type, um, and I'll actually choose a group, uh, choose a global form, um, simply connected. 
Um, the corresponding quantum group also has multiple forms. Um, there's a simply corresponding simply connected form of the quantum group. Um, the special thing that happens at roots of unity um, is that the quantum group gets a gigantic center. Um, it has, um, in, a, in addition to usual sorts of Casimirs, there's something called the Frobenia center. Um, that is generated by kth powers, roughly, of the Shivali generators. The e to the k's and the f to the k's and the exponentiated h to what turns out to be relevant is 2 k's. Um, there's this giant center. The representation category, if we ask for the center to act semi-simply, um, the representation category then splits according to the value that the center takes on any indecomposable representation. Um, and one ends up with a similar sort of picture. Um, one doesn't just get a single category, but rather a coherent sheaf of categories over a spec of the Frobenia center. Um, and in this case, where we're an ADE type and Q's an even root of unity, spec of the Frobenia center is the Langlands dual group. Um, and so the heuristic that I don't have time to go into more carefully uh, is that u, uq of g mod fibers over spec of the Frobenius center, which is as a risky open subset of the Langlands dual group. In other words, the, the adjoint form. Um, and now, yeah, so now we're in business. Um, we've got sheaves of categories here. We've got sheaves of categories there. Um, the fiber over the identity element is what people call the small quantum group. That's where you look at representations where e to the k and f to the k act as one and k to the 2k Sorry, e to the k and f to the k act is 0, and k to the 2k act is 1. Um, so the small quantum group is sitting there, um, but, but the full thing, yeah, it's more interesting. Um, so I'll, I'll finish in words. Um, Kashayev and Reshetikin, also some 10 years ago, proposed that this sort of structure um, in the category of modules for the big quantum group um, should lead to invariance of three manifolds with background flat connections. Um, it's exactly the sort of thing that one finds in twisted theories with global symmetry. Um, and in, in more recent work with Blanchet, Gir, Patiro, Miran, and several follow-ups, uh, that was made precise. Uh, and parts of these TQFTs that involve flat background flat connections have been defined. Um, and if I just assume that they're defined, I can, I can look on the physics side for where they would come from. Um, and so the final upshot um, is that one can um, engineer uh, a family of 3D n equals 4 theories whose topological twists um, match <coughs> match this, um, match the category of representations of the, big, of the big quantum group as a coherent sheaf of categories over G dual. Um, and the way we actually, um, the best way of arguing that physically um, is to show that the putative 3D QFTs have a holomorphic boundary condition that has a Fagan to Poonin algebra on the boundary. Um, and, and so whatever the category of lines in the bulk is, it should map the representations of the Fagan to Poonin algebra. Let me say what these theories are. I'll stop. Um, so um, we, sorry, there's um, under the same assumptions that G is ADE. Um, and I'll fix the level 
that is greater than or equal to the dual Coxeter number. Um, so and the theories with the right properties to match quantum group and Fagan to Poon and stuff um, are built by starting from what's called T of G, um, which is the, it's the S duality kernel for 4D super young mills that Gayotu and Witten introduced. Um, oh, here's, here's your example, maybe, of a non-Lagrangian theory. Um, just just take, take T of G and type E. Um, um, so uh, thankfully in type A, this is Lagrangian. Uh, this is a quiver gauge theory. Um, the relevant things to say quickly are that the Higgs and Coulomb branches um, are both nilpotent cones uh, for, for G and for G-dual, which are the same nilpotent cones. Um, and it has two symmetries acting on it. Um, there's, there's a G acting on the Higgs branch, and there's a G-dual acting on the Coulomb branch. Um, to, to get something with the right properties to match quantum group stuff, we want to introduce a Trans-Simons level um, so that some, some sort of root of unity and some sort of Trans-Simons E. Wilson lines appear. Um, and we want to keep the G-dual symmetry, but we want to get rid of the G-symmetry. Um, and so the way to do that is to gauge the G symmetry at level K. This then still has G dual symmetry acting on the Coulomb branch. And if we want to relate that to flat connections, we should take the topological A twist of, of that whole thing. Um, and so what we do in our paper is, is do that. We We define this family of topologically twisted theories and analyze a few things about them. In, in particular, show that Fagan to Putin algebras show up on their boundaries and do a few simple checks to, to match things in, uh, in quantum group rep representations. Um, thanks. Sorry for going over time. I did. Um, yeah, so in TQFT, it's Z of S1. Um, in, in 3D TQFT, this is, this is Z of S1. Um, it's an object in this category. Um, in, in, in physics, um, it's a classically, it's, it's a function on the space of fields that is supported in the neighborhood of a line. Um, so so when, in QFT, one builds correlation functions that usually just involve local operators. These are functions on the fields that are supported in the neighborhood of points. And one, one can generalize that. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. literally. I mean, I mean a cur any, any sort of curve in R3. Uh, an o open or closed, um, like categorically, like in this sense, one only, cares, one only looks at this locally. This is like a little tiny infinit infinitesimal piece of something that's line-like. Sorry, line doesn't mean straight line. Um, so it might be a little inside Yeah, and the, the classic example is in, in a gauge theory where the space of fields is, is connections on some bundle. One can produce a line operator by taking the holonomy of a connection along some loop. And that's, that's something that's supported, that, that, that knows about the values of, the, of this connection in, in a neighborhood of the loop. Yeah, sure.
I, yeah, absolutely did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this should be like one tiny piece of some vast web of cool connections with, with quantum groups and VOAs and non-semi-simple categories. No. Um, no, my, most of it is not, not yet worked out. Um, we, we know what the categories are for gauge theories, sort of. They're, um, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, they're, like, they're, they're descriptions in, in derived geometry that um, Hilburn and Raskin wrote down in a recent paper, uh, based, um, in, in part extending some previous work of Hilburn and Yu. They involve things like D modules on loop spaces and um, coherent sheaves on certain loop spaces. If you want, what, if you want to know what the categories are in gauge theories, um, they're, they're anyway. So, sorry, I, I think there's a lot to do in general. Um, I, I would love to match that up with uh, examples of like non-semi-simple TQFTs that have come up in math. Um, it, yeah, sorry, we've sort of discussed parts of this. Um, um, so, Um, so when you when you twist, um, zero form symmetries get promoted to one form symmetries. Um, as in, we started off with a zero form global symmetry, and now we're getting like lines um, that are characterized by homonomies, and that's a one form symmetry. Um, uh, and so, so the answer is really yes, but but the, I think the story is intricate. I mean, I had in mind the fact that gauge gets to the gauge Oh, gauge oh, sorry, that's what, sorry, and, and and yes, and absolutely. Um, so quantum quantum groups come in many different categories, and sorry, in, in many different flavors. Um, so there's a simply connected form of the quantum group, which is what we are initially shooting for. There are other global forms of quantum groups. Also, all sorts of stuff happens at other roots of unity. Um, and the, the thing that this fibers over is not necessarily g dual. Um, and and, and so, so, yes, there, there are intricate things that happen that would also be very nice to match up with physics of discrete one-form symmetries, which is what you were asking about. Yes. Uh, 